Hello, friends. <laughs> um, your favorite coaches that you have not seen in a couple weeks here, Laura and Melissa. Yep. Um, so welcome to week five. I cannot believe that you guys are so close to the end. We are so excited. You guys have done really great. And um, there's a couple big things happening this week that we just wanted to go over with you guys. So hopefully you've had a chance to watch Amanda's video from yesterday. If you have not, please rewind and go watch that. Um, but just quickly, um, the two big changes this week are going, the first one is feast day, feast day. Sorry. Easy for me to say. Yummy. <laughs> so feast day means just what it sounds like. You eat all the things with the cat. Ashley. <laughs> hey. Hi. Okay. We're going to made it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm That's cooking okay. dinner. No, you're totally good. I'm going to back up then. We just started recording just and we were going to repost it, but I'll back up just a minute. Um, so welcome to week five, Ashley. I know you've been here before, but I'm so excited you're back. You're killing it. I was so proud of your macros yesterday, girl. You're figuring it out. Um, so just wanted to hop on quickly to talk about some changes that are going on in our cycle, um, this week for week five. So the first big thing is feast day. So feast day is basically where you get to eat all the things. And by all the things, I mean all the good, healthy things, <laughs> not not all the things that you just never, ever eat. Um, yes, you can indulge in some of those things because feast day also happens to land on treat day. Yay. Um, but basically what feast day means is we are going to increase our macros by 25%. Um, and the reason we do this, just to kind of back up a little bit, is because in VIP, which um, hopefully you guys will all convert to, um, and we can, we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but in VIP, we typically do different cycles. Um, and feast day is one of those things that we often add into the cycle. And the reason we do that is just to get out of any plateaus that you may have been on. People stay in this program for years on end because it is so sustainable, which is amazing. But the head trainers are really so great about creating programming and content that will keep us engaged and that will get us out of any plateaus that we have had. So feast day is one of those things. It was actually just introduced a couple months ago, Laura. I don't know. Not it's like three months now. Yeah. So basically, like I said, what you're going to do is you're going to increase your macros by 25%. There is a macro calculator in your app. Um, I believe it's under the nutrition tab at the bottom. So what you can do is you can go in there and put in, input your regular macros for each day. And then it will actually spit out your feast day um, goals for you. So it makes it super easy. The or only if, you have say, your own if you have your own calculator, put in your grams and then times it by 0.25. Correct. Same thing. I personally don't like math. I want someone to do it for me. So I'm using that, <laughs> that macro calculator. But yes, you can do that too. Um, the only thing I will say that's a little weird about the macro calculator, if you choose to use that, is it does ask for your um, low carb day. Just put 50 unless you're doing hundred, which I don't think anyone in this group is just put 50, um, as your low carb goal. And then everything else will just be your normal, regular macro day. So again, on Saturday, you're just going to increase your macros by 25%. So you're going to eat, um, extra awesome carbs, extra awesome protein. Um, and it just does, does take a little more pre-planning than you're used to. Um, it sounds awesome and it is great, but also it is very filling and you would be surprised how challenging sometimes it is to increase by that 25%. We do wanna say for feast day that um, we typically like to recommend that you break your fast a little earlier because you are eating more within that day. We're gonna go ahead and recommend you break your fast around 10 or 11 um, and then even, it, and then you can keep going until, you know, whatever. We'll talk about the next day after that. Uh, but you might actually want to stop your eating a little earlier that day as well. Um, so I'm going to, before we move on to that, does anyone, by anyone, I mean Ashley, um, do you have any questions on feast day? Does that make sense to you? I know you're on mute. Kind of like, okay, so I just looked at the calculator. You enter in your grams, not yes. your percentages. Correct. And then it calculates the grams that you need to hit in order to hit your feast day. Correct. And what day is that? Did we, did you talk through that already? That is Saturday. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so Saturday is feast day. Okay, yes. got it. 
Yep. Um, and you can screenshot that page too. Like if you're using the macro calculator, go ahead and screenshot that page because you'll use it later as well. Okay, so another reason you might want to break your fast a little early on feast day um, is to end it a little early on feast day because, drum roll please, um, we have a 24 hour fast on Sunday. Radio silence. Don't be scared. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're totally, and, and listen, I, I'm going to say 24 hour fasts are totally optional. You are not required to do them. Um, we encourage you to give it a shot, but if you are just not feeling it, then you don't have to. We don't, we don't want to force you into anything that you're uncomfortable with. So if you're not, if you already know today that you're not going to do a 24 hour fast, then just don't worry about it. You can just skip the rest of this. Um, but I will actually let Laura talk a little bit more about 24 hour fast days and how we handle those. So yeah, so 24 hour fast is exactly what it sounds like. Um, what I typically do is to what Melissa said is I will stop eating usually three or four hours before my regular scheduled time. So what I typically like to do because I like to break up the amount of time that I am awake and fasting between what I call day one and day two is I'll usually break, I usually stop eating at like four. So make sure I have a really good, well balanced macro meal. Um, maybe because it's feast day, add in a little bit of you know, more delicious, yummy food. Um, and then I can stop, I can start eating on Sunday at 4 p.m. So stop 4 p.m. on Saturday, eat again 4 p.m. on Sunday, and that's your 24 hours. Yep. You don't have to make it, you know, uh, midnight on Sunday to 11.59 on Sunday night. That's not how- how, how does that work though with feast day on Saturday? Like you're- how does that work if we're supposed to be upping our food intake? So, so what I do- is I would start eating Saturday at like nine or 10 o'clock. So I'll break my fast on Saturday earlier. So then I have from like nine, nine o'clock say until four o'clock to fit in all of my feast day macros. I, I'm also gonna just caveat, I have never gone as early as 4 p.m. That's, no, I just don't do that. I typically eat dinner, but you can't. The, the great thing about this 24 hour fast is you you do it whenever block of time you want to. Four to four works for Laura. Six to six typically works for me. I typically eat dinner around seven or 7.30. So on the morning or the day before a fast, I try and finish eating about six. So the great thing is, is it's, it's choose your adventure, guys. You can, you can do whatever time you want. The, the goal is, is when you start 24 hours later, that's when you break your fast. That's the bottom line. Whatever those hours are, it's totally up to you. The only reason we suggest to do it earlier is just because it's a mental game, right? A big part of this 24 hour fast is a mental game. So if you haven't broken your fast or if you ate until 8 p.m. the night before and you have to wait till 8 p.m. the next day, it's gonna seem like a longer time. That's the only reason we suggest to finish eating a little earlier than you do. But it doesn't have to be 4 p.m., doesn't have to be 6 p.m., whatever works for you. So then some strategies to get through the 24 hour fast is, that I, that I do is I try to have a glass of water every hour mm -hmm. or if I'm, if it's in the morning or I have herbal tea because in the 24 hour fast, you can have no um, sugars. So no Splenda, no Stevia. It is strictly you can have water, you can have tea, and you can have coffee. Nothing in your coffee, nothing in your tea. It's strictly a 24-hour fast. So I'll try and drink something um, at least every hour so that I'm, you know, staying full. Um, the other things that I do is I find a project that I have been meaning to do that I know is going to take a lot of time. So just again, mentally, I'm not thinking about food and my 
um, time is occupied doing something, I stay away from the kitchen. Like, and that is hard for me to do in my house because my house is open concept, but I literally try not to go into the kitchen on a 24 hour fast. Again, I'm playing mind games with myself so that I don't, I'm not tempted to pull something out of the refrigerator, pull something out of the cupboards. Um, those are the top three things that I do to get through a fast. And I have to be honest, it, it's getting easier and easier the more that I do it because I have these strategies that I know that I can implement. Mm -hmm. uh, are there things that you do, Melissa, to get through the fast? Yeah, that's really it. I mean, all the water. You're just going to drink all the water. Like Laura said, um, even if you're drinking coffee, like if you normally do nut pods in your coffee, like make it black that day. Um, so it's really just all about drinking water. It's about staying busy. It is, it's a total mind game and it is doable. But again, if you're not feeling it, don't do it. If you start off and you're like, I am going to do this fast, but it is two o'clock and you were feeling jittery and you were like, what is going on? Have a handful of almonds. Um, see if that helps you and then try and keep going. If that doesn't help and it just fuels the fire and you're starving, then that's great. That is still a success. You still were able to fast longer than you normally did within your day. So um, you have to listen to your body. Each and every one of you knows yourself way better than we do. Um, so these are just some tools to help implement. Um, so again, 24 hours, um, we'll just say, 4 p.m. to 4 p.m., 6 p.m. to 6 p.m., whatever you want to do. When it comes down to breaking your fast after that 24 hours, um, you're just going to have a sensible meal. The best thing to do is forget all about it. And I will say, keeping it real, because that's how I do. Um, <laughs> bye, Ashley. Um, the, that's the hardest part for me, is once I finish a fast, I kind of want to eat all the things. Like I'm like, okay, I haven't eaten in 24 hours and I kind of want to eat all the things. Um, so it really is just a mind game to just, um, you know, have a sensible meal, have like chicken and a sweet potato and an avocado, something that well balanced if you want to break it with a smoothie. Um, and then, but just don't eat all the things. <laughs> um, just get it out of your head, have a great meal and then just move on. And then if you, and then if you feel like, you know, if you've eaten at 6 p.m. and it's 8 p.m., feel free to have like another little snack before you go to bed if you want to, um, to get you to your fast the next day. And you may need to break your fast a little bit earlier on Monday, which is also fine. So yeah, one thing that we want you to understand is when you break your fast on Sunday, you're not trying to eat all of your macros <laughs> on Sunday in a two hour period. No. You just, to Melissa's point, you just want to have a sensible meal. I, because I do the four to four, I typically have a smoothie and then I have dinner and then that's it. That's what I eat on Sunday and it's fine. And it's not going to screw up your metabolism or your hormones. You're going to be fine. And then on Monday, we get right back to it. You low carb macro day, we get right back to it. Don't break your fast with a blizzard from Dairy Queen. No. I love that, but that's not the best thing to do. You will, if you do break your fast with something that is very high in either carbohydrates or fat, you will not feel well later because I may or may not have done that once and I didn't feel so good. Okay, so that is 24 hour fast in a nutshell. We will be posting things in the Facebook group um, throughout the week. We will be giving you tips and tricks. Um, we'll give you a little infographic that helps just kind of recapping all of that. Um, and of course, any questions, just post them in the group and we are happy to answer. Um, you guys can do this. I know it sounds very daunting. It is doable. We do it in VIP once a month. Um, I know some people, um, you know, I have thyroid, like I actually have no thyroid function and I still participate. I asked my doctor, she said I could do up to two 24 hour fast a month. So, um, you know, I really, anyone can do it unless you're pregnant. I wouldn't, which we have no one in that group in our group doing that. Um, Melissa, yeah. so is this one time a month or is this every week? No girl. No, no, no. Just what it went in, in VIP. It's once a month. Okay. 
And yeah. so are we, are we practicing that this week or next week or are you just sort of talking about it? No, we are practicing. So Saturday is our, is our feast day where we increase our macros by 25%. And then that, it, that is going into Sunday, which Sunday is the 24 hour fast. Okay. So. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. No, you're good. It's what you're here for to ask questions. Okay. Hopefully that was clear. Again, we will continue to post. And if you have any questions, please let us know or reach out individually to either Laura or myself. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing we want to talk about is VIP. So um, since you guys are nearing the end of VIP, um, and we'll talk a little bit more next week, so I won't go too much into it. Um, but you guys, I just want to say VIP is where it's at. Um, we have been in it for a year at this point, I guess, mm -hmm. longer. Um, and it really is such great programming that they continue on. So we will, we'll talk more about that next week. I think Laura, Yes, next week. Um, but, um, we want you guys to be thinking about that and asking questions. Um, you all should be in auto enroll for VIP at this point. Um, and we will also post reminders about a cancellation. If you so choose um, to cancel, that is obviously up to you. Um, but I do want to make very clear, if you cancel your VIP um, auto enroll, um, you auto enrolled at $79. If you cancel and then you, re -de you decide later to join, you will join at 99 So that 79 is, um, is a discounted rate for the auto enroll. So again, no pressure. We are here to support you, whether you continue on or this is where your path ends for now. Um, but we just kind of wanted to throw that out there and just be clear about it. And I just want to make clear, you will enroll at 99 monthly. It's not 99 the first month and then you get the 79 subsequent months. It's 99 for the duration of VIP. Yes. Cool. All right. I think that's it, guys. Hopefully um, that was understandable. And um, I know it's a lot with the, with the feast and the 24 hour fast, but they are both really great. Um, you know, the 24 hour fast really just does give your body a longer digestive period, which is good to do every once in a while. Um, but we want to, you guys to listen to your body and do what you feel is right for you. And if that is not um, doing it this week, then that is totally fine. Um, we are here to support you no matter what. Okay, that is it. Unless, Ashley, you have anything else? No, I don't think so. I may replay it because I ended up cutting off a little bit. Yeah, so. okay. Yeah, sounds good. And again, we'll be posting all the info in the, in the group this week as well. So we just wanted to touch base. Okay, everyone have a good night. Hopefully whoever Thank watches you. is back. And Ashley, um, we'll talk with you later. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.